Hey everybody, what's up? Brennan here, and I just want to let everybody know that I am back. Or at least until Lionel gets here, but it's probably going to be a while, so don't worry about that. Anyways, I'm here for today's episode of Wrestling of the Week for WWE TLC. Now, we got a stacked card this Sunday. Show matches that, you know, span from SmackDown to Raw. And, you know, I'm here to give you guys what I think is going to happen through the course of the night. Now, this is worth mentioning because while the card is technically set, there's very much reason to be believed that things are going to change as the night progresses. There's a reports of uh, an illness going through the locker room, kind of similar to uh, the last TLC. Quite honestly, it's kind of ironic. And in addition to that, there's been various injuries, a lot of story telling things that are kind of in play. And quite frankly, the product ain't been very good recently and the ratings are starting to suffer from it. So there's a lot of reasons to believe that things might be very screwy tonight on Sunday night. So I will just kind of give you my predictions of how I think the course of the night's gonna go in addition to what is currently scheduled. First up for the TLC, Randy Orton versus Rey Mysterio in a chairs match. Now here's a very interesting match because you have two legends basically Probably gonna kick off the show to be quite honest in this out of it. Maybe not kick it off, but they're gonna be mid cards. You know, two guys who should probably be something in considering the title pitcher of some kind. You're just kind of stuck to their own devices. And, and although it's an interesting match, you know, it's a chair match. You don't see chairs, you know, used very much in WWE. It seems like you know they're kind of afraid of hitting you on the old noggin a little bit, so they've kind of stepped back from the chairs. But we get a chairs match between two legends, and I think. It's gonna be actually a pretty good match. I think it'll be probably one of the better ones on the night. But, you know, as much as I love Rey Mysterio, WWE loves Randy Orton and even more it appears. So I think he's gonna get the nod. They seem to give him these sort of matches. You know, it seems like that's sort of how they're keeping him happy nowadays because quite frankly, he's not doing very much else for them. Not his fault, not saying it's his fault, but it just, it is what it is. So my prediction for match number one will be Randy Orton over Rey Mysterio. Cruiserweight championship between Buddy, Buddy Murphy, and Cedric Alexander. Now, these two guys have been kind of wrestling for a while. You know, the whole 205 Live division is kind of a mess right now, unfortunately, which, you know, like I've said in many of the videos, it's kind of a tragedy considering they put on very entertaining matches. They just don't really get the push that they should, but it's really not gonna matter. You know, I think Buddy Murphy's gonna keep his belt. It's not gonna be a big ordeal. You know, there'll be some, a few oohs and ahs probably on the kickoff show, but it is what it is. Buddy Murphy's gonna retain the Cruiserweight belt and Unfortunately, no one's gonna really care. Next up, we have a tables match between Natalia, wrestling's kind of semi loyalty, and Ruby Riot, who is, well, Ruby Riot. Now, I feel like this match is pretty obvious it's gonna happen. You know, Natalia's gonna get thrown through a table with, you know, the whole Riot squad and all of them are gonna interfere. You know, they might make a match of it beforehand. I don't know, maybe some other people show up, but. I just don't see any other alternative than Natalia getting thrown through a table by Ruby Riot and probably the rest of the squad. So that's my prediction is going to be Ruby Riot gets the victory. Next up, we have the mixed match challenge finals between R Truth on Carmella versus Jinder Mahal and Alicia Fox. Because I guess they're still around for some reason. And well, I mean, it really doesn't matter. They're gonna lose. It's, you know, I kind of wish they would have done a better matchup. You know, something that would inspire a little more creativity in what I think might happen. But Carmella's gonna win. She's gonna do little dance moves. You know, and then our Chief's gonna do the the thing he does, and that's gonna be the whole match basically. Jinder Mahal might look kind of swell. You might see his like veins and his stuff, but he isn't gonna do shit with it. So it is what it is. We got Carmella and our Chief winning the mixed match challenge finals. Next up. We have one of the more interesting matches of the night, one of a really fun sort of stipulation as it is. It's a ladder match, but not a normal ladder match. Up, hanging at the top will be a guitar, perfectly suitable for Elias to get down, smash over Leo Rush's head, and then get beat by Bobby Lashley, which is probably exactly what's gonna happen, you know? So it doesn't look like we're gonna get our Elias concert, which is unfortunate because that's quite frankly one of the only few things WWE that has that's watchable nowadays, but whatever, it is what it is. I don't make the booking, I just watch it. So it's gonna be Bobby Lashley beating Elias in the guitar ladder match. Next up, we have Drew McIntyre versus Finn Balor. You know, it's a, kind of an unfortunate thing. Finn Balor, you know, could have been a contender. He could have been a contender. In fact, he was, well, he was the first Universal Champion until Seth Rollins decided to injure him like he kind of used to do all the time, but I mean, that's kind of bringing up the past. What matters is what's happening right now. And right now, Drew McIntyre 
is getting a monster push. I mean, just like this dude went from being like an outcast to suddenly Vince McMahon realizing this dude's big as shit and giving him the push that he, quite frankly, he deserves because he looks, you know, he looks the part. I'm not gonna lie, you know, he's not my favorite or nothing. I actually, you know, I much prefer Finn Balor, but you know, I get, I get it, I get it. Drew McIntyre is big, scary, so he's gonna win. That's all there is to it. They kind of don't really like Finn Balor at this point. I think. Before too long, he'll end up somewhere else and doing just fine. He'll probably go back to New Japan, to be quite honest, but it doesn't matter because all that's happening right now is Drew McIntyre is going to win this Sunday at TLC. We have the SmackDown Tag Team Championship. We have The Bar, who are the champions, versus The New Day and The Usos. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Yeah, we're getting, we're getting another one of these, and you know it's just going to be The Bar retaining, probably. I don't see why. I mean, at this point, they all, they might as well just all just share the belt and just like go home because, I mean, wrestling, WWE, tag teams, just not where it's at right now. They really haven't done a good job of putting, they kind of had it going on Raw, Office of Pain, but they ain't even on the show anymore and they're not even champions. So an idea of the state of affairs for WWE's tag team at the moment, but it doesn't matter. The bar's going to retain and then it's going to be probably a fun match. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not knocking them. They're fun, but it just... Storytelling wise doesn't do much for me. My actually most anticipated match of the night, Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship. You know, Seth Rollins, you know, I mean, I know I made the joke about him earlier, kind of hurting people, and he does. It's, it is, you know, it's not, not call a spade a spade, but at the same time, you know, he's really refined his style, I think. He just looked fantastic this whole year. I mean, I can't think of anybody who's had a better year in WWE than him, except for maybe uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Sorry, that was late. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's, so, so is uh, uh, so is uh, WWE pulling out of Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Anyways, it's gonna be you know they've been setting up this feud. It's got a lot of momentum behind it, mostly because of uh, Roman Reigns being out with leukemia. You know, regardless, Dean Ambrose is gonna steal that belt. He's gonna win the Intercontinental Championship by nook and by crook, probably by crook. Just saying, and. It's gonna give Seth Rollins his chance to basically main event Raw all next year. Uh, it sounds like he's gonna be the guy who's potentially getting the push. I personally think they should move him to SmackDown to do it, but that's that's just my opinion. Doesn't matter. He's gonna get a push, and I think deservedly so. I think you know he really was had something good kind of going on, slightly mismanaged, but he, you know his run with the belt initially, you know when he was the heel, they did get a pretty good job with it. You know, I mean, yeah, he ruined Sting's career, and yeah, he kind of lost it all when he fell on his knee, but only one of those things is really his fault. So, you know, I've always been really adamant to see him get another shot, another crack at things, and it seems like WWE is starting to feel the same way. So I think it'll be a little bad before it gets good, but I think it'll be an excellent match, and I do think Dean Ambrose will pull it off. Got ourselves a cat fight. Meow. We got it for the Raw Women's Championship. We got Ronda Rousey versus Nia Jax. Now, Nia Jax is getting a lot of heat because, quite frankly, she kind of sucks in the ring. I know everyone likes to give her a million passes because, you know, she's a big girl, she's doing things, and she's a real trend center and all these, but none of that gives her excuses that, you know, she's... Right now, she kind of ruined this, the whole WWE Women's Division. I'm kind of quite honestly astonished that they're giving her a championship match because of that, but, you know, maybe they're hoping that Ronda Rousey will actually break her arm or something. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I get it on paper. It's kind of a good idea for a matchup because you got, you know, Ronda Rousey versus a big old lady. Because could feasibly fuck her up, but it's not what's going to happen. We're going to have Ronda Rousey win. I think there's going to be shenanigans of some sort. I can't tell you what exactly because I don't really know. But I do think it's going to be at the end of the day, Ronda Rousey retaining her belt, setting up their feud for WrestleMania. By that, I mean... Whoever else is going to show up because I think there's going to be there's going to be some things going on. I don't want to go too into the details, but I feel like there's going to be shenanigans. But Ronda Rousey's going to win. Next up, we have what I think will actually probably be the main event of the night, or would have been the main event of the night. But uh, this, this is going to be a long one, so hold on, folks. Sorry, let me. I kind of need to rephrase what I said. Next up, we have what is supposed to be Braun Strowman versus Baron Corbin in a TLC match, but. It's kind of sounded like Braun Strowman may not get cleared because, you know, he hurt his elbow. He's been hurt for, a, for about a year, quite frankly, and it sounds like they finally 
sudden, hey man, let's give you some surgery before we give you a big push, maybe something like that. But if it goes scheduled, I do think it doesn't matter. Braun Strowman's gonna win. It is what it is. You know, they're gonna do something to make sure he gets his title shot. You know, kind of the, the piggyback story from uh, Crown Royal. But what I actually think is gonna happen is Kurt Angle's gonna show up and he's gonna beat Baron Corbin and he's gonna become general manager again. You heard it for first. That's my prediction. That's my hard prediction. But going with what's been scheduled, still gotta go with Braun Strowman. Next up, we have the increasingly irrelevant WWE Championship on the line with the new Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles. Now, there's a big hubbubble made. There's a, there's a big deal when Daniel Bryan did turn heel. I personally wasn't against it. I felt like it was actually a smart move in a lot of ways because, you know, the best heels are the guys you actually really want to root for. That's a little wrestling secret. You may not know it. But the fact is, the way they've handled this heel turn is... I think kind of dumb, you know? When you're saying stuff like having your guy who's supposed to be a bad guy basically preaching things that are like, kind of true? I don't know, man, it kind of rubs you the wrong way. I know wrestling isn't always designed, you know, it's designed for you to feel and not think, but at the same time, I kind of feel weird about it when people are saying things like, oh, people pollute the, the environment and it's a disaster and like, it's supposed to be bad when those are actually kind of two points and you shouldn't be a bad guy for saying it, quite honestly. but. All that's pretty irrelevant to the match itself, which I think will be really good, but I still think Daniel Bryan's going to keep that belt. It sounds like they're going to go with him for a while. I don't know who's going to dethrone him necessarily. Probably somebody at WrestleMania. Who knows who? But it'll be interesting, I think. I think it'll be a good match, and Daniel Bryan's going to attain. The new, sorry. The new Daniel Bryan's going to attain. But now, we are on to the final match, of the, or what will probably be the final match of the night, and that is the Women's SmackDown Women's Championship Triple Threat. TLC, which will be between Becky Lynch, Charlotte, and Asuka. Now, if this does mean an event, which I think it should, it'll be a really good match. You know, I think you're going to see a lot of action. You know, it's all really, this is another one that's kind of contingent upon how Becky Lynch's current state is because, you know, she had her face broken about a month ago. And I'm not a doctor, but usually that takes a little while to heal from, just saying. So, to her involvement in the match, I don't know what ex to what extent it'll be. I've heard that she may even be pulled from the match. I, I don't think so. I think what's going to happen is she'll be involved in the match in a quasi sort of way. You're going to see uh, Asuka and Charlotte Flair doing the bulk of the lifting. And then Becky Lynch is going to get her spot in. And that'll be the match. And she's going to attain. Because, quite frankly, she should, you know, there's no reason she shouldn't be women's champion right now. She's by far the hottest act in WWE of any of them. She's basically stone colding it right now. And I think WWE would be silly to not roll with that for as long as possible. These are my predictions for WWE TLC. Let us know what you think is gonna happen down below. And this is Brendan Eba. I think I hear somebody coming. Gotta get out of here. Later y'all.